The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. Coming up on the program, we're going to discuss how you can keep your plants cool all summer long as well as yourself and heat-loving vegetables and ornamentals. Our guest is Enoch Graham, YouTube magazine host and gardener. Plus your garden questions, the hour is full, so join us. You are listening to the most informationally packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the internet with your host, husband and wife team, Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. And welcome to another edition of the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Happy that you've allowed us to take uh, part of your day to educate and entertain you. I am your host, Joey Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner. Holly Baird. This program is for you, about you, to help your garden grow better, to maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, make your grass look greener, as well as preserving what you grow. Again, thank you for allowing a little bit of your time to be given to us whether you're listening to us on one of the 18 AM and FM frequencies, broadcasting our program here in 2024 through our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com, underneath the season eight tab at the top of the page, podcast replay, in studio video replay. However, you're doing such, thank you very much. Want to be part of the program? You're welcome to do so by sending us an email to garden talk radio at gmail.com. That's garden talk radio at gmail.com. Or you can give us a call at 1 800 927 show. That's 1 800 927 7469. And we will get your question answered. Before we get in the program, Holly, it's time for this week's joke of the week. So the joke of the week is why do plants use photosynthesis? I don't know why. So they, so they can have a light snack. Light, L I T, L I G H T, yeah, and like like the sun, like yeah. a light, yeah, light yeah. snack. Mm-hmm. Um, so this week's garden joke is brought to you by Rescue.com. American-made rescue products keep your family, home, and yard protected from pests, insects like wasps, hornets, yellow jackets, fi- flies, ants, and more. Learn more at Rescue.com. That's R E S C U E dot com. So. Summer is known to be uh, and seems to be by record getting warmer and warmer. Okay, it's just hot. So there's some things in which we need to do in order to protect our plants, in order for the plants to produce as well as uh, make them comfortable so they can produce. So there's a couple of things in which we can do. One, obviously, for many of us, water. Water consistently, water and irrigation system, whether it's Eaton Brothers Soaker Hose or drip irrigation from dripworks.com or a watering can or something of that uh, type on a regular basis. Keep the soil damp, not, mo- uh, not, not soggy, and not overhead watering during the peak of the day when a lot of it can be evaporated. And the whole myth of if the leaves get wet, they're going to magnify with the water droplets and burn the holes in the leaf. No, that's not true. Right. So you want to make sure you are watering frequently and consistently. Um, and, and that's why you and, smartly. and that's why you advise invest into a irrigation system, whether soaker or drip, because it takes a lot of the time out of it, it saves you a lot of time. Right. So something like a drip irrigation or a soaker hose, you can program it, you can a lot of these you can program it, you can put on a timer, etc. And this way you have the consistent watering and you might say well it's raining right now it's been raining all week well in july you might not see any rain for three weeks or eight or eight weeks so you want to keep this in mind as you um you want to keep this in mind as you think about watering that you need to be consistent and you're like no i know i'm gonna water every day after work and maybe you will we're not saying everybody is like this but I think that it's a good investment, and we are going to um, we're going to talk about shade cloth, which is another investment. Shade cloth comes in many percentile of darkness in order to prevent the harsh rays of the sun from burning your plant up. It does allow a certain amount of light to th- to get through based on the uh, density of the shade cloth. This is more predominantly used in southern applications, but I have seen in the northern portions of the United States in some gardens this being applied. Now, what is the recommended percentile of shade cloth for vegetables? Yeah, so one thing you want to know is there's two different types of shade cloth. There's knit 
and woven and woven is typically what most people purchase um so if you're not sure that's i don't i don't think that you would necessarily find it woven is going to be like the more taunt one um and so 30 to 60 percent is ideal for vegetables fruits fruit trees nurseries etc and um shade cloth will also help your vegetables and fruits safe from birds often at times mm-hmm. because they're not going to swoop down over your your plants or your vegetables whatever now shade cloth can be applied low to the plant or i've seen most applications where there's a framework above the growing area where this is stretched across like a tarp in order to prevent the sun and, uh, from from burning the plants but also allows you to get in and harvest it it's not necessarily like a frost cloth or, or a woven uh, bug repellent cloth where you drape it over the plant itself. You're high above a, a seven, eight, nine feet on a framework so you can get in and, and harvest as well as allow water to come through, but not to the consistency that if... If you're, if you're not familiar, if you've ever seen shade cloth, you could just Google image search it, or you might have seen it. A lot of times they'll have them in like garden centers, nurseries, etc., over where the plants are mm-hmm. kept. To, to keep those seedlings safe. And from. to make the customers more comfortable. And to make the customers more comfortable. Because it's hard to pick out tomatoes when the, when the sweat is bleeding through your eyes. <laughs> you, yeah, so you, 70% is for like greenhouses and the 90% that would be used for ground cover. So uh, it's very, very thick yeah. as opposed to the 30 to 60. An- another way in which you can keep your vegetables happy is mulch. By mulching, whether you use pine straw, pine needles, or regular straw or chemical-free, seed-free grass clippings, whatever you use, make sure it's safe and not been sprayed with an herbicide or persistent uh, chemical. It can keep your soil three to five degrees cooler than the ambient temperature. Say that, uh, you know, you, and, and you keep moisture to it. A cooler root system for a plant is a more productive plant. Just like in humans, if you keep your head cool your body is cooler Uh, and that that is the same concept when it comes to plants so any type of mulch you can put it on a little thicker uh on the mulch and it'll be just fine also use intensive planting which means in in, in, plant things closer together which shades the soil which keeps the soil cooler the, uh, the concept would be like the three sisters garden where you have the squash as the ground cover the corn as the pole for the beans and the corn produces while the beans climb up the corn but you're shading the soil to prevent water uh, evaporation as well as uh, heat uh, permeating into the soil right so that's yep that's the um intensive plant intensive well i want to talk about harvesting regularly okay this is important whether you have, uh, you know, hot weather or regular summer, whatever you end up having, we end up having. Um, harvesting regularly is important because it lets the plant know I need to keep producing. And so this will not, it helps the plant be less stressed out. So if there are other conditions stressing the plant out, it's like one less thing for it to worry about. So it helps keep it happy and healthy and feeling productive. So that's why you want to harvest regularly. Ways to keep yourself cool, and this is a fun little fact. Uh, One ounce of water for every two pounds of your body weight you should be consuming on a given day. Not necessarily a hot day, just any given day. Or a better way of breaking this down is uh, men 19 and older, 13 cups of water or 104 ounces. 128 ounces is one gallon, so kind of keep that in mind. And women 19 or older should consume nine cups of water or 72 ounces of water. 64 ounces is a half gallon, so a little bit more than a half gallon of water or or, uh, one ounce for every two pounds of uh, weight you have on your body in order to stay hydrated. When you're hydrated, you're less susceptible to um, sickness. You are better focused because you are hydrated. You can think clearer. And you feel better because you're hydrated. Um, Another fun little thing in which you can uh, look at is uh, Mr. Cool DIY Direct. You can be your own air conditioner person. Uh, They offer a a, a cooling system 
Uh, you can control your home comfort by Mr. Cool DIY Direct. Empower yourself with a touch, uh, top-notch, do-it-yourself coolant and heating solution. Uh, Mr. Cool fourth-generation mini-split. DIY-friendly way to keep your home perfectly comfort all year round. You can be your own uh, AC person. Yeah, the systems come with everything you need for installation, including our patented pre-charged line sets, eliminating the need for expensive professional help. You can visit Mr. Cool diydirect.com to learn more uh, to take the first step towards a cooler more comfortable home and you can use your promo code garden for a special discount and a free nationwide shipping mr cool diy direct cool your house heat your space all by yourself uh, might as well take advantage of the technology and keep yourself cool and your family after you've come out of the garden and you're consuming your two ounce your one ounce per two pounds is that what it was yeah. One ounce per one ounce per two pounds of weight. So it'd be like basically an ounce if you're of if half you're, your weight. Yeah, if, if you're, you're if you're hundred pounds, you're drinking 50, 50, ounces. 50 fluid ounces of, of wow. liquid. Yeah. All right. So we are brought to you today by our sponsors, Walton's Inc. Listen, we know you care about where your food comes from. Canning and preserving your vegetables, fruits is great, but what about the meat? At Walton's Inc. you can get everything, equipment, seasoning, and supplies to make sausage, jerky, and any other meat products your way to your high standards. You want to make snack sticks that people will actually like. Walton's created meatgistics.com, an informational site to help you make the best finished product. Walton's even has a full line of their own meat grinders, mixers, and sausage stuffers to help you go from animal to edible. Walton's, everything but the meat. You can use code GROW50, that's GROW50, to save 10% off your order of $50 or more at Walton's Inc. Dot com. When we come back, several vegetables and ornamentals that love the heat. You're tuned into the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Blue Ribbon Organics providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardeners, farms, landscaping, and more. To find our products nearest you, visit blueribbonorganics.com. Happy 65th anniversary to David J. Frank, Southeastern Wisconsin's leading landscape company. Their award-winning services include everything from lawn care, landscape maintenance, design, construction, renovation, irrigation, sustainability, and more. Big or small, let the experts at David J. Frank handle the hard work for you. Find out more at davidjfrank.com. Deer Defeat is an all-natural based animal repellent to keep deer and rabbits away from your valuable plants that is odorless after 30 minutes and dries clear. It creates a continuous invisible shield to protect your plants. Works for 30 days through rain, snow, and freeze. Will not clog your sprayer. Apply to your property without environmental damage. You can spray directly onto your plants up to flowering, then apply around your plants to continue protection. No need to reapply. Money back guarantee. To purchase, go to DeerDefeat.com and use coupon code RADIO to save 10% off your order. Make watering easy. DripWorks provides quality drip irrigation supplies and equipment to gardeners just like you for all your growing needs across the U.S. and Canada. Purchase online at DripWorks.com. Jung Seed Company is a family-owned and operated seed company since 1907 with the largest selection of seeds and plants online. Use coupon code 10TG24 to save 10% off your order at JungSeed.com. The coupon code is 10TG24 at JungSeed.com for 10% off. Are you bugged by bugs? You need Naturally Green Products No More Bugs. Environmentally friendly, made in the USA, No More Bugs is a cedar blend that repels and eliminates mosquitoes, noceums, ticks, fleas, roaches, ants, and more. No More Bugs is safe for you, your pets, and plants. Available online at nomorebugs.net, Amazon, Walmart.com, and the Home Shopping Network. Dig planting holes from a comfortable standing position. Step, twist, pull, and plant. Visit ProPlugger.com. Wind River Chimes will always be the inspiring harmony. With a large selection and customization options, you will find the sound that soothes you. Visit WindRiverChimes.com to shop and find out more. Welcome back to the Garden with Join Holly Radio Show. Happy that you are taking time out of your day to join us on the program. Before we get into plants that love the heat, a word from our bee loving friends, Honey Bee Healthy. Since 2000, Honey Bee Healthy Inc. has helped beekeepers maintain healthy and thriving hives. Attracting pollinators to your garden this year is as simple as hanging a hummingbird feeder with a mixture of sugar, 
water and honey be healthy original don't be alarmed to see birds bees and butterflies dining together at the feeder pollinators coexist peacefully honey be healthy inc is offering a 10 percent discount on an eight ounce bottle of honey be healthy original to this show's listeners you can enter discount code b garden that's like b-e-e garden at checkout for more information mixing instructions and more you can go to honeybehealthy.com you don't have to have a hive or be a beekeeper. You can just put that out and, and help feed the bees. You are a, a friend to the bees. There you go. Yeah. Now, heat-loving plants. We talked about in the last segment, ways to keep your plants cool. Now, these are plants that love the heat, that thrive in the heat. Now, keep in mind that these plants do require moisture in order to love the heat. So, and with most of these vegetables, we're going to talk about some ornamentals as well, when the ambient temperature exceeds 85 to 90, even sometimes 95 degrees, pollination quits. The plant just goes into I'm staying alive mode until the temperatures daytime get below that 90 degree Fahrenheit and nighttime get below the 75 degree Fahrenheit. That's why in certain parts of the country, such as Florida and Texas, these do not get grown during the summer months. The, the weeks that are th triple digits and, and the buildings begin to melt because it's so warm, um, they don't grow these things. Right. So, so, let's talk about, uh, so let's talk about these plants. So one is sweet potatoes, yep. which um, it makes sense because I know up here we tried to grow them a couple times and we got... Up here meaning Wisconsin, Wisconsin where the show originates right. from. Um, you forget that we're on so many stations. I you do. just assume that, oh, it's right there. so yeah. So, sweet potatoes, they don't, we tried and we didn't grow them very well. So, and we we heard they're, they're the, the warm, warm weather loving plants. Well, so now they, that we're in a different zone, that might change things as well. I don't like sweet potatoes. So I, I know care. you don't like sweet potatoes. And yeah. People, anyway. How do you not like sweet potatoes? Uh, cucumbers are another one. That um, there's also somebody who's like smacking their spouse and saying, um, See, I'm not um, the only one who doesn't like sweet potatoes. Keep your mouth shut, <laughs> no, don't tell anybody. Um, cucumbers, yeah, cucumbers. Now, now they love the heat, so why? So, don't plant them early, they are not an early season crop, meaning that the soil temperature at root zone one to two inches below soil grade, use a digital thermometer, uh, meat thermometer works great. 65 or above consistent temperatures. This is what the cucumbers like. They do not like cold feed or cold root systems. They are short-lived. They're not going to produce for 6, 8, 12, 14 weeks in some instances. But you still need to have moisture to them. And you want to harvest these regularly. Not when they're the size of football or, or anything. You can harvest them, the little baby cucumbers. You can harvest them in any size. But the more frequently you harvest any of these peppers, cucumbers, eggplants, fill in the blank, green beans, the more they're going to produce. That's their nature. They're not. They're, they're going to keep producing because their and goal is to get to a mature state of seeds inside the fruit, and then they shut off if you. And cucumbers are not a long living plant, or not. Yeah, a I long just yeah producing plants. So just You're taking notes that whenever I was saying that. Yeah. yeah. I just, I always like to say that and I think I just forgot that you said it. Um, so then the other one I wanted to touch yes. on for sure was okra. Yes. I I don't you, like okra. So I don't also know. known as lady fingers and fun little fact, there are 135 different varieties of okra in the world. That's a lot of okra. Take that to the bank and cash it. I'm, I'm not taking any okra. Okay. Yeah. And if you don't like the sliminess of the okra, grow it, dehydrate it, then rehydrate it. The sliminess is gone. It's still gross. Okay. Uh, anyway. It, it so loves the heat. Go ahead. It loves the heat. Um, I don't know. What were you going to say? No. Go oh. ahead. You're, you're, uh, it loves the heat. It's it's uh, it's heat tolerant. That It's a staple in the Southern cuisine because yes. of that reason. And that's... That's why it's in a lot of southern cooking, et cetera, because it does do well in the heat. It's got a tremendous. It's got a very large tap root, which is not recommended for containers. We are in, as we spoke about, uh, we're in zone five now, in zone six, and we were able to successfully grow okra in our garden and produce uh, several years ago in our zone five area. So it's not just oh, it's good. I'm gonna, I can't grow it because I'm not in Alabama. Or Georgia, you can grow it in the north. It will won't get you know tree top tall, but you can still can produce the um, okra. Right. 
So then we also have, um, besides okra and cucumbers and what was the other one? Sweet potatoes. Peppers. A lot of people don't always know this, that peppers like the heat, especially hot peppers. Tropical like plant. Heat. Yeah, it's a tropical what? plant. Um, so it does, and it also needs to be watered very consistently. There is a theme here that these plants need to be watered consistently. Use mulch, use water in combination. And they're pretty easy to grow um, for the most part if you have that that uh, heat. If, if you have a nutrient deficiency, it's going to be very prevalent. Yes. And if you don't have a soil test and you're like, something's not right, the peppers are all wonky, they will show very, very uh, clear sign that something's not right in your soil. They're a garden tell. But you still need a soil test from SoilSavvy.com. Absolutely. So another tropical plant that many people don't realize is a tropical plant is tomatoes. Mm-hmm. And that also the, they also love the heat. If you've ever had a summer where it was really warm and there was not a drought, you will end up with tomatoes. Certain varieties, though. Yeah. Certain var- And people will say, when we go to garden talks, what, what is the tomato that has just done everything? Black crim. Hot summers, dry summers, wet summers, black crim has always produced for us. No matter what the condition. There's been other ones that's been hit and miss. There's been some that's only done good and, and dry or only done good and really wet. Black crema, for us, we have found over the last 10 years, is the guarantee. Now, I wouldn't recommend planting a whole acre of black crema tomatoes. You've got to have some variety. Just like in big ag, you have, you, you got your, your seed, you got your corn and your soybeans, and you have four or five different varieties spread out throughout the farm. So if one takes a hit with a, with a disease or a bug or something happens, you have backups. That not all one variety, and then one variety is done and you lose everything. Yep. So yeah, that's a good. That's a very good tip to to grow a different variety. And I recommend that if you have the space for a lot of these plants, you want to grow a variety. There's certain certain other plants like leeks. I mean, you don't need to grow a variety of those. But tomatoes, it's fun to grow a different variety, and it's I think it's smart. Um, eggplants are another one. Uh-huh. They are in the the nightshade yep. family, so they go with the tomatoes, and they like the heat. They um, they like. <laughs> You like the well-draining soil like any of these plants. And then you always want to make sure, just like anything else, you want to harvest them frequently. That helps their growth the best. And Larger doesn't always mean better with an eggplant. Same thing with like cucumbers. Yes. Even tomatoes. I mean, um, there's a certain point where you got to harvest tomato when it's ripe, regardless right. of the size. Uh, right. Absolutely. And that's that's something to keep in mind is that you want to, to harvest, especially like the eggplant and the cucumbers. Um peppers but once they get too big they get kind of gross mm-hmm. and woody before we uh, go to the ornamentals uh i want to sweet potatoes and potatoes are two different types of plants potato sweet potatoes like the heat regular what we call potatoes if the soil gets above 85 degrees they shut off they'll just die the, and when you get your soil temperature above at root zone, we're calling, you know, let's say four inches down, if that gets above 85 degrees, you've got some very warm conditions in which you've been able to, that's been able to make that soil that warm. So, so yeah. very, very different. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. Um, so what we're going to talk about next? Or, or, oh. Ornamentals. Ornamentals? Yeah. Okay. Ornamentals there. Oh, Let's the, list um, off some ornamentals. Zinnias. Zinnias. So those are those are like a, a petally flower. Like yeah, these are like ones that are heat resistant plants for your summer garden. And then purple cone flower. Those are good. So zinnias are good for the pollinators and so uh-huh. are purple cone flowers, especially like hummingbirds. They like to kind of put their little beaks in there. And then blanket flower. I'm not super familiar with blanket flower, but that sounds cool. You know what black eye Susie Susan's are? I do, yes. Those are the Rebecca. and Cosmos. Cosmos now, are pretty too. And these are just you know a handful because we uh, said that we would list you some ornamentals, um, and there's only like uh, thirty or forty more uh, ornamentals that you can that love the heat, including cacti. And you can grow cacti in the north. You've just got to bring it in in the winter. What about a Christmas cactus? I, I don't. I, there's. <laughs> Possibly. They, they usually, I think they bloom around Christmas, yes, and that's why yeah. they, they call them that. Well, we talked about heat-loving plants. Uh, the heat is here for most of us, Holly, and you will want to protect your garden with various uh, from those beetles, boars, and including Japanese beetles. Yeah, what better way to prevent these pests from destroying your garden than by controlling them while they are larvae? 
Grub Gone is easy to apply granule product that can be spread onto your turf to successfully control grub invaders. Developed by Phylum Bioproducts from a naturally occurring bacteria, Grub Gone is a non-chemical BT product that specifically targets only scarab pests and it's safe to use around bees and other beneficial insects. Uh, if you, yes, if you already have those beetles flying around your yard, then Beetle Gone is the organic water dispersible powder that you can use to spray directly on your edible plants. Find out more about all the products they have at phylumbioproducts.com. That's P H Y L L O M bioproducts.com or beetlegone.com. Also, the uh, Christmas cactus uh, likes medium indirect light. Uh, bright indirect light to medium indirect light. So not necessarily a heat uh, intense plant, uh, just to clarify a few things. Well, thanks for clarifying. I shouldn't have joked about it, but they are pretty. Keep temperatures above 70 degrees Fahrenheit in the daytime and 55 to 65 degrees at night. And uh, you'll have a happy Christmas cactus. Hey, we're gonna you're going to be happy when you hang around. When we come back, magazine host on YouTube of the Urban Gardener, Grant... Uh, Enoch Graham will be with us. You're tuned in to the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Have a garden question? Give Joey and Holly a call now or anytime 24-7. Just dial 1-800-927-SHOW. If you can't get through, leave a message and they will call you back. Call now 1-800-927-SHOW. Make hand watering easy and enjoyable with hose link retractable hose reels. No more tripping over hoses, kinks, tangles, and avoiding rolling the hose up. With an automatic retractable hose link, saves you time and effort manually coiling up your hose, leaving your focus on the things that will bring you joy in your garden. Available in multiple colors and lengths, you'll be sure to find the retractable hose that works for you. To find out more and to buy online via hoselink.com, use coupon code RADIO10 for $10 discount. Mantis Tillers, the premium long-lasting gas-powered tillers, are the perfect solution for any garden. This Mantis machine is available with two or four cycle engines with a 19 inch or 16 inch tilling width. Your DIY companion in your garden and your lawn converts easily for edging, aerating, and more with optional attachments. Find details at mantis.com. Are you ready to take control of your home's comfort? With Mr. Cool DIY Direct, empower yourself with our top-notch do-it-yourself cooling and heating solution. Introducing the Mr. Cool 4th Generation Mini Split, the DIY-friendly way to keep your home perfectly comfortable all year round. Our systems come with everything you need for installation, including our patented pre-charge line sets, eliminating the need for expensive professional help. Visit MrCoolDIYDirect.com to learn more and to take the first step towards a cool more comfortable home. Don't forget, use promo code GARDEN for a special discount and free nationwide shipping. Mr. Cool DIY Direct. Cool your house, heat your space, all by yourself. Your mosquito frustrations are over. Now with Mega Catch, suitable for residential and commercial use. Mega Catch mosquito traps produce a vast array of mosquito-attracted stimuli, including safe CO2, and can attract mosquitoes and other biting insects up to 150 feet away easy to use and set up. The Mega Catch is ready to make your outdoor space comfortable and enjoyable at megacatch.com. Use coupon code J O E Y B, my name Joey B, at checkout and receive 20% discount on your entire trap order at megacatch.com. Soil Diva Liquid Microbe Stimulant Spray improves the health of your plants you work hard to grow, stimulates the natural enzymes, and increases beneficial soil bacteria. Go to SoilDiva.net. SoilDiva.net. Water supply tanks provide BPA-free, long-term, safe storage for drinking water. From 35 to 1,500-gallon tanks, Water Supply Tanks has you covered. From preparing for unexpected needs, off-grid property, easy gardening access, and more. For questions and to order, visit watersupplytanks.com and use coupon code GARDENING10 to save 10% off your order. Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly Radio Show. Happy you've joined us today. Holly, let's go to the hotline and bring in our guest for this week. Enoch Graham is the creator of The Urban Gardener, which is a garden adventure vlog and video magazine on urban and small space gardening. Welcome to the program, Enoch. Hey, thank you so much for having me on your show. Well, thank you for taking time out of your day, not only to educate Holly and myself, but all of our listeners 
And I'll start with this, Enoch. Tell us about The Urban Gardener and what was your inspiration to create this online platform? Um, well, The Urban Gardener uh, was just a you know kind of a fun project I got started with just trying to share some of the kind of fun and unique things that I was doing in the, the small space garden that I have. And, uh, you know, just kind of turned into, you know, a, a fun little community. And uh, now we do a weekend uh, live stream garden show of our own and all sorts of just, you know, fun things around small space urban gardening. Well, this live week, weekend live stream, where, what was the inspiration? Where was the aha moment that you said, that's what I want to do. That's what's missing. We should try this. Yeah, well, see, when I when I first started the channel, again, I was I was showing things uh, at my garden, but I have a background in kind of uh, journalism, photojournalism, and that sort of thing. So one of the fun things I thought I would do is go and visit other people and visit their gardens and make some videos. And that's kind of where really the, you know, was those first couple of times that I got out and did that, that the inspiration for kind of doing more of an interview type of uh, channel and show and then the show ultimately that we came up with later on after that yeah. but yeah it was really just getting to visit some of those really great first gardeners that we got to go to that uh, that really just pushed us on our way to doing the show that we do today and, and those visits uh, john colder is one of them these people who we watch on a weekly basis that we feel that we know but it, it's you know we have to step back and go we only know what we see even though we feel like we're best friends uh, so, right. so it's one of those things that it's very unique to meet one of those people that you've seen and watched for years and learned from. Yeah, yeah. John was definitely, that was one of those, you know, John, uh, Kay Cottrell yeah. as well, too, was another one right off the bat at first. You know, someone, again, like you said, I watched these guys for years. And then for the opportunity to go to John Kohler's uh, garden that I watched him build on all these videos for years as he inspired me to do my gardening and my small space gardening, getting to visit him and see him and be in his, in that garden space. And uh, again, to be able to talk to him personally about things and, and the interview I did that first time. Again, it's just, that's really inspiring, you know, and I, I'm sure anybody would feel that way if they get to see someone that they really, you know, really uh, watched a lot of and, and took in a lot of uh, the inspiration they gave them and, and a lot of us watch these youtube videos we have a lot of listeners that watch a lot of gardening youtube videos you just have to ask your question and the and typically that person will personally respond back to you with an answer of of whatever that question is it, they're, they're not you know all scared and, and and celebrity why i don't want to talk to anybody they're doing this to help you out and they're in you know, exactly they e email them or ask their ask you their question and they'll answer it for you Exactly. And, you know, and that's exactly what I found, too. And especially as we moved on to doing the weekend show that we do, I mean, we reach out to some of the top YouTube gardeners, some of these top gardeners, you know, whether it's YouTube. In fact, we just did recently did an interview with Joe Lample. You know, he has the Growing a Greener World on PBS. You know, all these sort of people we look at is like, you know, in the gardening world is almost celebrities, right. but they are just people like us. And like you said, they're out there doing work to inspire us. And that's all I've found. It's just reaching out to people, reaching out to these folks. And, and I find them to be just as welcoming to me and my questions and, and, and especially in the interviews. Definitely. So what was, would you say the biggest challenge in growing in a small area that you've had recently or just something that ha you know, it was your biggest challenge. Well, there's so you know, again, you guys know as gardeners, there are lots of lots of challenges that kind of face that we face each and every year. But I think ultimately, what my biggest challenge is with small space gardening and utilizing the spaces that we have is growing as much as I want to. Now, we all know as gardeners that, you know, we first start with a couple of plants and the next thing you know, we're trying to grow everything. Right. And that's the same no matter what the size of space you have is. And especially for those of us with smaller spaces who are limited with what we're able to do, we want to grow everything. So I think that's the biggest challenge is what can I fit into my space? What can I actually grow? It, it's a good drug to have. I want to grow everything. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> 
what 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 encouragement can you offer people who are listening that, that you know I listen to this garden show I watch this but I, I just don't have the space to grow anything but I really want to yeah um I would say find ways with you know especially watching like my channel other channels i know you guys provide a lot of great information on this sort of stuff as well too but i find that you know we there's always something we can grow in almost any space that we have i started when i first started gardening on uh, in an apartment all i had was like a balcony this is small little balcony that i had and it was barely getting any sun but i was still able to grow quite a bit out of that space so that's you know that's one of the things i try to tell people is that if you feel like you can't give it a try anyways and you'll be surprised more than likely about what you're able to accomplish with uh, very limited spaces and, and people it, it's okay to kill plants you got to kill yes, some plants in order to learn Absolutely. I've definitely, and this is the biggest thing, any experienced gardener will tell you this for sure. We kill more plants than we actually grow successfully. And that's all a part of the uh, gardening and plant journey in learning about caring for plants is, you know, having to go through a few of them in order to get some good experience. But then five, seven years down the road, you know, nine leaks are not going to work in a square foot. You got to put six in there and, and, and you'll get beautiful leaks instead of what the book says. We all, and it all depends on your yep. garden, and your situation. Yep. Yep, exactly. And, uh, you know, and those are those things, especially with small spaces too. Like you said, you know, it's how much can I fit into a space? You know, can, will the, you know, can I grow one plant, two plants or three plants in say uh, a five gallon bucket? We use a lot of those in our garden spaces, you know, so it's, there, there's a lot of trial and error. And a part of that trial and error is, you know, uh, again, as you said, uh, killing off some plants or maybe not succeeding as well on things. But, you know, a, another point of encouragement I like to give people is to keep going, man, yeah. keep trying. Uh, um, you know, the, these are the things that we all learn and we all go through, even us experienced gardeners have done you know, for many years. So, you know, just, just get out there and grow is what I tell people. Right. You're not building a house. You're not installing plumbing. You're going to make mistakes. It's not detrimental. Learn from it and do it better next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gardening and nature and all of that is very forgiving of our, uh, you know, inexperience and uh, will teach us, you know, along the way as we move forward. So it's just, you know, it's just about getting your getting out there, getting your hands in the dirt, in the soil, you know, and just and just uh, experiencing gardening and experiencing uh, growing your own food, especially, uh, you know, there's a lot of different types of gardening. I really emphasize growing my own food and food growing vegetable gardening and there's I, I just think there's just nothing more empowering than being able to do that so when you get out there and you do that you give it a try you're going to feel that and then next thing you know you're going to be a crazy passionate gardener just like myself and i know you two are as well oh yeah definitely so what was one of your most impactful interviews that you had uh, or have had on your program um Oh man, I've done so many great interviews. Um, definitely, um, I did an interview and I just had her back on the show. Ashley Thomas, the Mocha Gardener, she wrote a book called How to Become a Gardener. I've had some, we've had just a couple of really great conversations. I love her passion for, you know, growing food and, and what she brings to, uh, brings to the table as far as what she does. She, that was a really great interview. Plus, you know, getting to interview uh, folks like uh, James Prigioni, who I've followed many times. Um, again, we've mentioned John Kohler, you know, just all of these really great people and great folks who are, who are out there doing awesome things and inspiring people to grow and garden. And it, it's just become my objective to, to try to interview as many of them as I possibly can so that I can just dig into their garden stories, learn more about them. And then hopefully at, at the same time, you know, sharing their experiences with other people and introducing them to people they might not have, uh, you know, might not have heard of them as well. Because there's so many, so many awesome gardeners out there sharing their experiences. Well, a lot of people uh, hear the Pacific Northwest and they think sun and a lot of rain, but you, uh, but, but you still manage to grow plenty, 
please burst that uh, with plenty of, of sun there. Uh, burst the myth about it always rains up there. Is it always raining or is there considerable eno- uh, enough nice weather for you to have a successful garden? Yeah, well, I've lived all over the Pacific Northwest. I'm probably at the bottom of the Pacific Northwest is now, now, but I spent plenty of time living like in the Seattle area and they do get plenty of rain, but you know what? I, I, when I go and visit there still to go visit friends and family who have got gardens, they got some of the greatest gardens up there. That rain is just really great. I don't think it's, there's, I don't think they get too much of it. But you know what? I do like where I'm at in in Southern Oregon. I don't get as much of that rain, but I get plenty of uh, plenty of sun. We have a great growing conditions all throughout the Pacific Northwest, and I don't think anybody's having any trouble with any rain. So let's burst that myth for sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, now. If I remember right, you are in growing zone eight, or did that change when the USDA re-racked it, everything this earlier this year? Um, no, I didn't change. I was one of those few that didn't change. Well, I guess it was about 50-50, I think is what they were saying. But uh, I, I didn't change. We're uh, at zone 8B down here in southern uh, Oregon. And uh, I know several people kind of around me in northern California in places did change uh, as far as their zones and all of that. But uh, it hasn't really affected me. And I, I, you know, as far as zones go, I'm not sure if it's really, really too much of an effect on anybody in the changes. It just clarifies things just a little bit more about what climates we're growing in. Well, we certainly appreciate the time you've offered us. Enoch, how can people find out about you, find your videos, find your weekly program? Where can they go to, to capture all of that and, and review and, and watch past uh, episodes? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Come on and check us out at uh, The Urban Gardener. Just simple, The Urban Gardener uh, on YouTube. Just put that in the search engine. It should be right there at the top. And then uh, come check out our channel. Come check out, like I mentioned, all of these great interviews. We've done uh, several visit video interviews that we've done and then come check us out on the weekends saturday and sundays 11 a.m pacific standard time Uh, we've got the let's get growing show where we're interviewing and talking to new people each and every week and we're just we're just out geeking about gardening and having so much fun every weekend so i hope everybody comes and checks us out well, we greatly appreciate the time you've offered Holly and myself and all of our listeners and the information you've shared and taught us. Thank you very much for that. Absolutely, you guys. Really enjoyed talking with you very much. And uh, we'll definitely have to get you back on my show again sometime soon. Absolutely. And when we come back, it's your garden questions, our garden answers. You're tuned in to the Garden with Joey and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Water the right amount for the right time with the Soaker Hose from Eaton Brothers. Soaker Hose is one of the best ways to water without drowning your plants. And with a timer, it becomes a set it and forget it way to keep your plants healthy and happy. Soaker Hose is designed to work at low pressure, seeping water slowly and steadily over the course of 15 to 20 minutes so the water can percolate the soil and get to the roots. Designed and manufactured to be lead free so no harmful chemicals or Odors are added to your water supply. Visit EatonBrothers.com for more information and to buy. Pomona's Universal Pectin is a high quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar or honey to sweeten. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Also available at natural food stores and online. Rootmaker starts your plants off right and keeps them going through harvest. From their seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots to their large variety of grow bags, 1 to 60 gallons. Their products will provide you the harvest you've never seen before. Visit Rootmaker.com. Use coupon code ROOT. 
24 to save 15% off your order at rootmaker.com. That coupon code is ROOT24 to save 15% off your order at rootmaker.com. Garden like a pro in three easy steps and receive customized fertilizer recommendations for your garden or lawn. Soil Savvy helps you determine what nutrients your plants need to thrive. Never again overapply nutrients they don't need. A patented process that makes you a smart gardener. To get your soil test kit, go to MySoilSavvy.com. Have insects such as aphids or fungal gnats invaded your plants? Fight back with Summit Year-Round Spray Oil and Summit Mosquito Bits. Organic Summit Year-Round Spray Oil kills insect pests on indoor and outdoor plants. All natural mosquito bits kill fungal gnats, larvae, in container plants. Both products are harmless to people, plants, and wildlife. Summit year-round spray oil and Summit mosquito bit are available at garden centers, hardware stores, and at summitresponsiblesolutions.com. If you could double the life of your raised bed boxes by sealing the wood with a clear non-toxic wood preservative, would you? Well, now you can with a clear penetrating product called internal wood stabilizer. It's 100% non-toxic and easy to apply. Seal your untreated wood surfaces, even chicken coops, by spraying on internal wood stabilizer. It's invisible, seals the wood from the inside out, and never wears off. Recommended by organic gardening experts, Internal Wood Stabilizer. Check it out at TimberProCoatingsUSA.com. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Happy you've been part of the program today. If you missed any of the coupon codes that's been offered throughout the program, you can go to our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page or the Season 8 tab, and they will be listed all there for you. It's time for your garden questions, our garden answers. you got a question, shoot it on over here to us at GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. That's GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. Dot com, or you can give us a call anytime. Jam your fingers in your phone at 1 800 927 show. That's 1 800 927 7469. See if we can get through to the top of the hour. You talked about using recent canning recipes, referring to our previous uh, conversation a, a week or so ago. But the library has canning books from back even like the 70s. Why aren't these recipes safe? How do I know a recipe is safe to use? So for the record, um, the library has a lot of books from the 70s and before that. So the library is not going to like toss these books out because they might be irrelevant. Out of, uh, quote, quote out unquote, of, out, out of date. date. Yeah. Right. Um, so the recipes aren't safe because... Th- just like most science, most food, food and beverage, whatever you want to call it, science has changed just like what, everything well, else. Well, the product itself, the food itself has changed. The food changed. itself has yeah, changed, well. yes, but also so has, you know, as we think about, you know, lifespans, think about people getting diseases, people are living much longer. Just like, so as the science, medical science has changed, so has food science, so has, um, again, the fruits and vegetables themselves they those components inside them like tomatoes are less acidic green beans used to be able to to uh can them with boiling water now you need to pressure can them it's just something that naturally occurs these changes so um you you can know if a recipe is safe if it's within the last 10 to 15 years you also again there's trusted resources like freshpreserving.com um, National Center for Home Food Preservation, Better Homes and Gardens, any sort of master canner, those are all safe recipes. Uh, fun little fact here. Uh, obviously, you don't hold this to us, but uh, while you might not turn out to be garden specific for uh, this reason, research has found that living longer is one of its many benefits, gardening. Gardening, including being outdoors, connecting with nature, and being physically active all of which are good for your physical and mental health. So basically, if you're a gardener or you're outdoors a lot, there is some science and some data that proves that you might live a little bit longer. Yeah, because you're not stressing yourself out. Well, you, 
shouldn't be stressing yourself out. <laughs> All right. So next question. This is a question for, for Joey. I okay. I made a pallet bed and people are saying it won't last long. How long do you think it might last? And is there any ways to make it last longer? Well, you're right. It won't last long. It's a pallet bed. It's made out of very thin timber. Uh, you want a heat treated uh, pallet not a chemical treated palette. And also you want to fi figure out if you can, and this is obviously difficult, more difficult, what was on the palette prior to receiving it for your garden use. Meaning if it had some horrible toxicity, chemical barrels on it, that were leaking into it. Obviously you're probably going to see some stains on that, on the wood there. For the most part, you can utilize this. If you want to figure out and you want to build a simplistic pallet raised bed go to our parent website go to the search bar in the upper right corner which the parent website is the wisconsin vegetable and click and search pallet raised bed we don't take the pallets apart and sand down the boards and make a frame we cut them in thirds slap them vertically nail them together and there's your pallet raised bed it's going to last you about two three years at best and if you want to make it last longer you can use a product called Timber Pro Coatings Internal Wood Stabilizer. This protects the wood from the inside out. You can also use this on, on your regular raised beds, chicken coops, your deck, whatever you have that's wood that you want to preserve it for an eternally long time. That's Timber Pro Coatings, USA.com, Internal Wood Stabilizer. It's uh, under the uh, Season 8 tab at our website. And you can get many, many more years out of it. If you're just wanting a quick turnaround, make the raised bed, use it for three or four years, throw it in the comp or throw it in the, in the trash or burn pile, get another one. So you're not investing a lot of money into a two by 10 or two by 12, 12 foot long, eight foot wide uh, raised bed. That would be the way to go. You can also, in addition, this is not part of the question, but you can also make straw bale gardens. Uh, for a fraction of the price as a raised bed. Now, if you're someone, and what I mean raised bed, if you're not intending to stay where you're at for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, and you're somebody that moves a lot for a job or because that's who you are, you don't want to stay around in one spot too long, and you consistently move, mobile or short-term raised beds or growing situations is best. Ray, uh, grow bags like from... Like a pop-up raised bed. Right, from rootmaker.com, uh, R-R-O-T-2-4 for coupon code, uh, straw bale garden, pallet, ra uh, pallet raised bed. Um, you don't want to invest, you know, 70 80 $200 in uh, wood from a big box store, and then you're going to leave in two years. Though that may, in some environments create a better investment or a better value for your home if you have somebody that's eager to garden and you've already got one established in the backyard but not everybody wants to get in the gardening game as as much as you may want to or you have right and that makes that makes a lot of sense so um next question is is i would like to buy a composter for my patio i've seen like all sorts of composters there's the ones that twirl around there's these ones that look like boxes any advice aero bin composting uh aero bin composting bins they've got two different models in which you can select um oh boy 128 gallon and 240 gallon something like that is um what it is it you put your stuff in now you have to layer it it's not like it's a magical thing where it just does everything wonderful there's a certain amount of browns to greens explain what that is Sure. So browns is the the not the nitrogen, the um, carbon. Carbon. Thank you. And so that's things like dried dried leaves, uh, twigs, cardboard, shredded paper, things like that. Anything. So it's more of like the dry the dry stuff. Anything that's more wet. And you might think, well, my kitchen scraps aren't wet. They are in the world of nitrogen. So that's the greens. That's the nitrogen. So that's anything like kitchen scraps, like vegetable, fruit, whatever. Grass clippings. Um, I don't even know what else you possibly put on like a patio composter, but it's a lot of times for people, it's like kitchen scraps, things like that. Small, uh, small lawn clippings without chemicals on them. Yeah. 
um, Arrow bin, they have a 55 gallon uh, for the small size and 111 gallon for the large size, or a 400 liter and a 200 liter composting capacity. And it's got the door at the bottom, and you can remove it uh, and harvest it. Um, you can go to Costco.com and search Aerobin. You can go to Burpee.com to search Aerobin or Home Depot.com to search Aerobin. And Aerobin is A E R O B I N composter. So that is what the, we would recommend. Right. So we've reached that portion of the program where it's what we've learned today. All right. So I've learned that, you know, even though I kind of knew this, from Enoch that the Pacific Northwest, you know, is a very successful gardening area and maybe it's not as gloomy as people make it out to be. Well, it's, I think it's like eight, nine and 10 in growing zones. Yeah. So it's, it's almost tropical to some degree and it's warm like 11, 10 months out of the year. They do get those yeah. snowstorms uh, every now and then, but I would say 10 months out of the year compared to six months for the rest of us. I think if you and I move there, it would be a learning curve to grow. I don't want to live in the Pacific. No, I don't either. No, but okay. I'm just saying like if. If, you know. if. What I learned today was one ounce of water for every two pounds of body weight you should be consuming on a normal everyday day. Not a hot day, not a cold day. This is a normal consumption of water. So if you weigh 200 pounds, you should be drinking 100 ounces of water, which is just shy of one gallon. One gallon being 120. This is water, not beer or apple juice or Kool-Aid. This is water. So that's what I learned. What we learned today is brought to you by Honey Bee Healthy. Whether you're a gardener, a bee hobbyist, or a professional beekeeper, Honey Bee Healthy Inc. has the products to help you maintain a healthy hive and thriving garden. For more information on how to use Honey Be Healthy in your garden, visit honeybehealthy.com. Tune in the program next week where we'll be discussing landscaping. Should you do it yourself? And if you don't and you hire somebody, what you need to look for and ask. As well as Tamara Haspel, author, will be with us and will answer your garden questions. So until next week for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. <laughs>